if uh, you know, there's a, there's a saying in Nike County Sheriff's Office, you lie on the Garrity, your career dies on the Garrity. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get through this. Any other questions? Like I said, is that, you know, this is not an effort, you know, I mean, uh, you know, the paper does uh, what the paper does with the information they're given. Um, I wish I, you know, and Matt Ward uh, did try to uh, reach out to me. I couldn't be, I was in the office at, at that time. I, I, had, I was taking care of Sheriff's Office business. I did not get the message until like later that night once I plugged into the, um, the, the network to, uh, you know, to update my, my iPhone. Um, but I'm, I'm still waiting for the message that the deputy sent me. I just told him, he said, you get my message on this investigation since Sunday? I went, no, I checked my iPhone. I didn't come in yet. So we'll see what happens when that comes in. Um, but um, I, you don't have any questions? Um, I guess my only question is how long is a typical IA investigation of someone that may have violated policy take? That's going to, that depends upon how many witnesses there are to, to talk to, um, how much evidence is going to be presented. I, like I said, is that it's, it's expanded a little bit. You know, it's got a whole new dimension. I, just, I talked to the IA, um, the IA investigator today, and, uh, and, you know, he's going, oh, boy. <laughs> You know, but hey, you know, uh, well, we're good at what we do, and well, we'll get through this. I mean, like I said, is that, you know, any allegation, um, you know, even police officers um, are uh, have the, you know, have the same standard, you know, innocent proven guilty. This case, there's, you know, the process to this. Um, but I just wanted to address some of the things that were brought out to brought out in the newspaper, um, um, and uh, I was kind of. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that brought that, that kind of like amazed me in this. But the most amazing thing was this uh, was this thing that allegedly happened. He's claiming it happened in Boulder City. Now, you know, I still keep in contact with uh, uh, with the chief of police of Tom Finney. He's, reti he's retired. I still keep in contact with him. I never 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 was reported. So I'm being pretty much sure I didn't. You know, it didn't come to my attention. I'm, I'm sure if I contacted. Uh, um, you know him, and he probably didn't brought to his attention as well. So apparently, this either this person is um, is misrepresenting the facts. I can't say he's lying, but misrepresenting the facts. Sergeant Travis Huggins did not give me all the information that 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 uh, uh, that uh, that was in the newspaper. Um, I can't believe, no Sergeant Travis Huggins, that he would uh, deliberately cover up a, a crime or and um, not tell me that this this former officer was covering up a crime. That occurred in his presence, and that um, that the agency that he works for, being uh, Boulder City, uh, was not informed of what does occur because th basically, this is one of those things you definitely better make sure you tell your boss because they'll come back and, uh, and bite you. And um, you know I don't know what's going on uh, uh, with this uh, officer now, and I don't know if this is going to, you know, um, get back to his chief. I don't know if there's going to be, you have to answer anything. This happened in 2007. It's like, really, you think about it, we're in 2014 now. How many years ago was that? Seven. Seven, <laughs> Seven years ago? You know, and, and this is what I'm saying is that they're talking about all these secrecies. You're talking about two instances of seven years. And the second one I didn't know anything about until it was brought out in the newspaper. And believe me, I was kind of surprised at the, of the, of the reaction of, of uh, Captain Beck. I know, I don't know why he would. You may think that that would be an appropriate venue for that to be, but I'll tell you the truth, as as the sheriff, as a, as a as a sergeant, if I was as a supervisor or anybody else, I would have said, you know what, this is one of those IA moments, and that's something you give to to and the narcotics. What's the narcotics unit going to do? You know, uh, you know, I, and I'm talking to them. They were they weren't even aware of anything with uh, Sergeant uh, Horn. So, okay. Uh, and I appreciate you know, I appreciate your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to, to uh, air this out and at least give the public an opportunity to respond to some of the um, misconceptions that was brought out by by, uh, by people that gave information to press. Press can only go by what they're given. Um, but you know, like I said, as I, I looked at this, I was very much aware of the 2007 since I remembered sending him down there and getting this discussion. And we actually had a debriefing on this in my office. That wasn't brought out by uh, so but. That occurred, and nothing. There was nothing. Just, we can't find anything. I go okay. Got anything? Go nope. Nothing. I go, okay. Uh, my the information I got back is that the individual was uh, was drunk, and not under any kind of uh, uh, not any kind of, any, any kind of um, you know uh, illegal narcotics being given by a member of the office. And believe me, Sergeant Huggins is a good investigator. If, if he could have determined whether that had occurred or not, 
I would have had information for Sergeant Huggins that occurred, but he couldn't find anything. He just gave it back and says, oh, let me go through internal affairs. We discussed it. We didn't have anything even going to internal affairs with. If we had, if we had, it would have went to internal affairs. You just can't go now on a witch hunt by the, when Travis Huggins being the president of the NCLEA saying, oh, yeah, we couldn't find anything, but we're still going to bring him into charge of what? He answered your questions. The other person answered your questions. People that were involved answered your questions, and they say that nothing like that happened. <clears throat> One more question? No, you haven't asked any question you want. Sure. Um, I know you can't delve into any of the details that have come out so far in the internal investigation of this incident in January, um, but are you able to say whether or not IA has met with Sergeant Horn to get his side of the story? I can't say that. Okay. I can't say that. Um, like I said, we can't talk about the investigation by policy. I can't talk about it. But no, we can't talk about the investigation. Um, but like I said, there's a, you know, there's, uh, there's, uh, it's, a, it's a dual, it's a dual investigation, and uh, you know, it's, it, there's a criminal side to this that that's being uh, taken care of by the DA's office, and it'll definitely be a, um, uh, there's their own side being investigated. We're interested to see what's in the police. I haven't seen the uh, uh, report finalized as it's in front of the, um, uh, in front of the DA. The reason being is that I'm the final decision maker uh, for. Uh, any discipline that has to deal with Sergeant Horn. And I can't, uh, you know, this ex parte communication issue that, uh, you know, if you have too much information, then you have to show, you have to show impartiality because you are uh, making a, a judgment on this. It's like a judge having, you know, hearing, uh, only hearing one side and not the other. It has to come to me directly, you know, but I know that the investigation, that's why I didn't, I didn't look approve that investigation as I would some other ones. Uh, but that's over there and um, we'll see what happens. Uh, when the information comes out uh, in the in the press, well, I know it would, then I've done, that's a different story. Like the judges can look at something in the press and still not uh, have uh, feel that they're somehow partial or uh, you know uh, to that uh, to an outcome. 